Well, hello everyone. My name is McKenna Diebel and I was YBSC's Waste Diversion intern, intern for this spring 2023 term. Here we go. A little bit about me is I'm a fiend for adventure of all sorts, whether that's taking a flight over the Colorado River or going on an impromptu trip to Seattle to go running with some friends. I'm also a sustainability major at Colorado Mountain College. Um, I just finished up my second year. And uh, through that program, I've had some amazing opportunities to learn how to canyoneer, keep bees, and also meeting some really rad snowboarding buddies. For this term, I'm so grateful to have had the opportunity to work with YBSC's Waste Diversion Director, Wynn Cowman, as well as their Zero Waste Coordinator, Dakota Dolan. For my project, I also worked closely with Salt and Lime, High County Conservation Center, and Steamboat Ski and Resort Corporation. So I started this internship at a really like interesting time for the composting sphere here in Colorado. First of all, in January of this year, A1 Organics, they're the largest commercial composter in Colorado, changed their policy to only accept food and yard waste. They wouldn't accept any compostable paper or plastic material. In March of this year, the majority of commercial composters in Colorado also adopted this policy. Because of this change of policy, Boulder County rescinded a previous initiative that required all restaurants to have a compost bin available in their kitchens and for their customers. It's really interesting because in light of these changes, Denver decided to continue to pursue a pay-as-you-throw program that is designed to encourage residents to take on composting within their homes. The main reason for this policy change was a PFAS contamination found within compost. PFAS stands for either perfluorinated or polyfluorinated substances. They're used to make a, a heat-resistant, water-resistant coating on the insides of paper cups or on tea bags. Um, and prolonged direct exposure to PFAS have been linked to numerous health risks. Some, some of the most common that I found was liver damage, fertility issues, as well as several different types of cancer. PFAS are one of those forever chemicals that um, are really persistent in our environment and, well, we found do not break down during compost. Another interesting change in the composting sphere here in Steamboat Springs specifically um, is that we had a pilot program that ended. So in 2022, the Sierra Club issued a grant to several communities to start uh, restaurant composting. And this grant would basically pay for the compost service costs for several restaurants. We had Drunken Onion and Cruisers enter this pilot program in February of last year and Salt and Lime started in June. And then in March, this March, that program ended. And so to support these restaurants from this transition to a grant funded composting program to a program that they had to fund themselves um, is where my project objectives came from. So the first thing I wanted to do is identify best practices in composting for full service restaurants and then summarize these findings in a composting manual that can be used for marketing and communications purposes. I also want to create and share any other communications related to restaurant composting that may be necessary, as well as investigate opportunities for growth for our restaurant composting program. To examine the current state of restaurant composting and identify these best practices, I work really closely with the management at Salt and Lime. Salt and Lime had a super enthusiastic management team that really cared a lot about composting and they really wanted to be just cutting edge in terms of their sustainability within their restaurant. But because of the size of their staff, as well as their seasonality of their workforce, they had a lot of trouble communicating composting policies to their entire staff. Because of this, their compost had a lot of contamination of dishware, straws, and glass. This contamination drove up their compost service prices. And because we want them to continue to compost when they're paying for their own composting services, we had to make sure to keep their costs as low as possible. So some solutions that we came up with, is first of all, the food and yard waste policy change came out only a couple days before we first met with salt and lime. And communicating the simplification in composting policy was actually very welcome from them. It was a lot easier for them to communicate that only food and yard waste go in the compost bins than breaking down every little waste cup and straw that could go in there too. We also replaced salt and lime's in-kitchen composting bins 
with several bright green smaller buckets. Salt and lime originally had their compost bin, it was the si same size and shape as their trash and recycling bin, which led to several problems because first of all, that bin was super heavy to try to haul outside every night when it was full. And also was once we got any contamination into that bin, it was pretty much indiscernible from the recycle or the trash bin, which led to continued contamination throughout the night. So replacing these bins with several much shorter five gallon buckets that are bright green and have a huge sign on them that say food only, um, really helped to communicate the change in composting policy, reduce salt and lime's compost contamination, and they were a lot easier to take outside. Salt and Lambs Management also requested that we create a certificate of their composting accomplishments that they could hang to communicate how important it was to their staff that they're composting. So you can see on this picture over here that we did do that. And we thought that that was such a good idea that we also made a certificate for our other two composting restaurants for the pilot program, Cruisers and Drunk, um, Drunk and Onion. Between the three restaurants, about I forgot to put this number in my notes. Let me say, so between Cruises and Drunken Onion, there are 26 tons of compostable waste that was diverted from the landfill, which is the equivalent of taking three cars off of the road um, per restaurant for a whole year. Salt and Lime composted 12.9 tons of compostable waste, which is also equivalent to taking three cars off of the road for an entire year. I summarized my findings about this project in a composting manual. Um, it's put in a trifold um, kind of setup. And this manual goes over um, how the pricing is usually broke down, how to build a composting plan, as well as the contact information for compost waste haulers and some benefits to composting within restaurants. So to learn more about restaurant composting expansion, I work closely with High County Conservation Center. So they're a similar organization to YVSC, but they're based out of Summit County. They also participated in the same restaurant composting pilot program that YVSC did, and they now have over 15 restaurants composting through their program. Uh, they're able to collect data to show um, that restaurants that compost through HC3 are able to reduce their trash pickup rates by about one pickup per week. And that's one of their major marketing selling points when they're talking to restaurants about why they should compost. Some of the major suggestions they had for us on how to grow the restaurant composting program is to send out representatives to Rotary Clubs and Business Association to directly um, talk to restaurant managers and owners about the benefits of composting and why it's important. They also personally train the new restaurant staff on compost habits and policies. Through those trainings, they actively seek out composting champions in every restaurant's staff. And they keep in contact with these champions to check in on how the restaurant's composting program is going and also just to um, make sure that they're still marketing and talking about how important it is to compost. They also shout out their restaurant composting milestones on social media and help market their composting restaurants in, HC, in appropriate HC3 communications. Some of the key takeaways that I gained from this project are, first of all, when, in, when integrating new aspects to a restaurant system, the simpler this aspect is, the better. Um, in short terms, the simplification in that composting guidelines made it way more accessible for salt and lime to integrate composting within their system. Furthermore, making sure that compost bins are in the same place as trash bins and that the same flow within the kitchen can be used um, really makes it a lot easier for staff to adopt this change in um, waste management. Furthermore, differentiation is key to adjusting workflow. And this really um, refers to the difference in buckets, just the different size, the different level of brightness and the color, and the signs really helped um, passively communicate to staff how to compost and how um, Salt and Lime wants their um, composting flow to go. Furthermore, framing system changes as accomplishments is more effective than framing these changes as challenges. Uh, through uh, giving out certificates of accomplishment to the restaurants that compost with us, we really found um, that the staff were super excited to just learn that this 
new thing that they were doing in their restaurant, the extra effort that they put in every day was making a big difference in their community. Some of my concluding suggestions for YBSC is to gather data on the quantitative benefits to restaurant composting. Uh, currently, with the amount of restaurants that we have composting with YBSC, the trash pickup rate is not necessarily um, applicable data that we can gather, but looking for other quantitative benefits, either through increased talking about sustainability within staff or even less trash bags they have to buy per season um, could be great to add to our marketing um, communications about the restaurant composting program. Also attending these Rotary Club and Restaurant Association meetings to engage business leaders in discussions about composting could really help spread the word and more deeply engage our community on the importance of composting in restaurants. Furthermore, increasing the visibility of our composting restaurants wherever appropriate in YBSC communications can, on one hand, really help and support our composting restaurants who have taken on an extra expense in order to help our community, would also increase the visibility of the restaurant composting program. Some of the additional YBSC focus areas that I was able to engage in during the internship, um, I was able to attend and work at a lot of zero waste events, which were super fun. Um, I was able to participate in both the stations and talking to our community about how to sort their trash, but also in the setup and takedown and kind of the management aspect of those events was really interesting. I also had so much fun on the YBSC staff ski night. Um, I also had some really interesting conversations with the Resilient Land and Water Priority Area folks about um, just some of our restoration projects on the Yampa River and our focus areas there. And I also had so much fun at the Elkstone Farms Volunteer Day. Some of my personal takeaways from this internship is I learned how to communicate in a professional setting, specifically through emails. Like I wrote an email to one of my professors the other day and it had like the bolded font on dates and everything. I never would have thought to do that before. <laughs> I also learned how to prepare for meetings, not just by having all my deliverables prepared, but also have my questions and discussion points prepared. Um, and I also refined my self-guided research skills. This is one of the first times where I've had to build my own knowledge base around a um, subject matter, as well as asking my own expansionary questions on this knowledge base. Um, and then where appropriate synthesizing information, I had to seek my own articles and um, it was really interesting and really beneficial to my research in my other classes. And finally, I would like to thank several amazing people who helped this project come to life. Michelle Stewart, the executive director, Nicole Pepper, the geospatial analyst and internship program manager, my mentors, Wynn Cowman and Dakota Dolan, as well as the management team at Salt and Lime, Ben Henion and Nick Sharp, uh, Sarah Jones, who helped set up the zero waste events at the mountain, and then my HC3 main contacts, Rachel Zer Zerowin and Allie Flynn. Thank you so much.